Barbara Eden, a woman who has always lived in the shadow of tragedy, is now 92 years old. What makes Barbara stand out is not her career achievements, but her melancholy life. What did this little woman have to endure from her husband, son, and colleagues? It's all in this video. Let's go. Barbara Eden, the iconic actress known for her role in the classic TV series I Dream of Jeannie, had a challenging and tumultuous early life. She was born in Tucson, Arizona, and spent her formative years there. However, when Barbara was just three years old, her parents went through a divorce, and her life took a dramatic turn. Following her parents' divorce, Barbara and her mother faced financial hardship. In an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, she candidly admitted, money was scarce. To make ends meet, they made a significant change in their living situation. They moved to El Paso, Texas, to live with Barbara's grandparents. It was during this time that Barbara formed a deep bond with her grandfather, whom she described as a wonderful man, who never hesitated to provide her with everything she needed. The love she had for her grandfather was profound, and she cherished him dearly. After spending a few years in El Paso, Barbara and her mother decided to relocate once again. This time, they moved to San Francisco. It was in San Francisco that Barbara's mother remarried, and she gained a stepfather. Despite the challenging circumstances, Barbara referred to San Francisco as a place that still feels like home to her, as she told the Bay Area reporter. Despite the struggles, Barbara Eden has fond memories of her time in San Francisco. She recalled how she used to enjoy roller skating at the wharf while her stepfather indulged in fishing. These cherished memories provided moments of happiness and escapism from the hardships her family faced. However, during those trying times, her family's financial struggles were so severe that they had to share their house with one of her aunts and her husband. This period of economic hardship forced Barbara's family to frequently change their residence and schools, resulting in her attending five different schools in San Francisco while living in five different homes. Despite the constant upheaval, Barbara, in her memoir, Genie Out of the Bottle, reflected on her family as a carefree household. Even though her stepfather's job as a telephone lineman didn't provide them with a substantial income, Barbara remembered that her family had not forgotten how to love, laugh, and dream during those difficult years of the Depression. Their ability to find joy and maintain their sense of humor in the face of adversity left a lasting impression on her. Amidst the financial struggles, Barbara Eden's love for show business began to blossom. She pursued her passion by starting to study singing, and her dedication and talent eventually paved the way for her to participate in local events. Remarkably, despite her financial constraints, she managed to overcome her circumstances and was crowned Miss San Francisco in 1951. Barbara's journey to becoming Miss San Francisco was a turning point in her life. She recalled how her acting teacher had encouraged her to participate in the pageant as a means to overcome her shyness. Standing in a bathing suit in front of an audience was a daunting prospect for her, and she admitted to being really embarrassed. Nevertheless, the experience taught her valuable lessons and marked a wonderful turning point in her life. The shock of winning the title despite her initial reservations, was a testament to her perseverance and the beginning of a remarkable journey that would eventually lead her to become a beloved figure in the world of entertainment. Barbara Eden's journey to Hollywood was not without its share of challenges, particularly in the face of industry misogyny and body shaming. When she decided to pursue her dreams in Hollywood, she encountered a talent scout at Warner Brothers who epitomized the sexism prevalent in the industry, especially with regard to women's bodies. In an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, Barbari recounted the disheartening encounter. The talent scout, after inquiring about her drama training, shockingly produced a picture of his daughter and callously remarked, See, honey, that's what you need. Big tox. This crude and demeaning comment deeply hurt Barbary, but she was determined not to let it datter her from her dreams. Barbara chose to view the incident with a more positive perspective. 
She realized that not every role in Hollywood was written for women with a certain physical appearance. Instead of aspiring to fit into a limited and stereotypical mold, she made a deliberate choice to pursue a career as a character actress. Her determination to focus on her craft and talent rather than conforming to unrealistic beauty standards was a testament to her strength and resilience. However, there was an unexpected twist to this story. About six months later, while on the Warner Bros. lot, Barbara Eden encountered the very same agent who had previously dismissed her due to her figure. In a remarkable turn of events, he failed to recognize her and inquired about her identity. Barbara revealed who she was, and the agent's attitude had completely changed. He expressed his intention to screen test her, stating, You're going somewhere. This transformation in the scout's behavior served as a powerful lesson for Barbara. She shared her experience, emphasizing the importance of having faith in oneself, as things in life aren't always as they initially appear. As Barbara Eden's career began to ascend to greater heights, her friends and managers encouraged her to explore the possibility of dating fellow actors in the industry. Reluctantly, she agreed to a blind date that would forever change her life. This blind date was with Michael Ansara, a notable star of the popular TV show Broken Arrow. Little did she know that this encounter would lead to a profound and instant connection. Barbara Eden found herself falling head over heels in love with Michael Ansara. She described him as a kind-hearted man and a talented actor, and their connection was immediate and deep. However, her romantic life was not without complications. At that time, she was already in a relationship with a refrigerator delivery man named Tony, who did not take the news of her wanting to break up very well. According to Barbara Eden's memoir, the situation with Tony became increasingly unstable. He struggled to accept the end of their relationship, and his emotional distress escalated to a concerning point. Matters took a dire turn, and Barbara was forced to take drastic measures to ensure her safety and the safety of those around her. She made the difficult decision to ban Tony from the set where she worked, as his presence was a constant source of tension and concern. The most harrowing incident in this tumultuous chapter of Barbara's life occurred when she received an alarming phone call from Tony one fateful night. The call was a distressing plea for help, as Tony had attempted suicide. In a desperate rush, Barbara Eden and her future husband, Michael Ansara, raced to the scene to intervene and save Tony from his life-threatening situation. The relief that Tony ultimately survived was immense, but the incident left an indelible mark on Barbara. The experience of facing such a life-and-death crisis together with Michael and Sara profoundly changed the way she viewed him. It engendered a new level of respect and appreciation for him. Barbara Eden's early television career brought her into contact with some iconic figures, including the legendary Daisy Arnaz, known for his role as Ricky Ricardo in I Love Lucy. However, her encounter with this television icon turned out to be a challenging experience, teaching her the valuable lesson that one should be cautious about meeting their heroes. As Barbara Eden recounted in her memoir, Genie Out of the Bottle, Desi Arnaz was, in her words, a world-class philanderer. During her guest appearance on I Love Lucy, he allegedly pursued her aggressively and persistently. Barbara Eden was taken aback by his advances, as she had always held the principle that married men were strictly off-limits for her. Her commitment to this personal boundary was unwavering. Faced with Arnaz's relentless pursuit, Barbara resorted to a rather unconventional strategy to fend off his advances. Whenever she saw him approaching during rehearsals, she would literally hide from him, evading his attention. This unusual tactic was her way of avoiding any romantic entanglements on the set, as she was determined to uphold her own moral principles. Thankfully, Desi Arnaz eventually got the message, and by the time they were ready to shoot their dancing scene together, he had transformed into a complete gentleman. This change in his behavior provided Barbara Eden with a sense of relief and allowed her to focus on her work without the discomfort of unwanted advances. 
Despite the challenging experience with Desi Arnaz, Barbara Eden maintained a positive working relationship with his wife and comedy legend, Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball was impressed by Barbara's comedy timing and even contemplated putting her under contract. Barbara was in awe of the opportunity, but also a little anxious about appearing on Ball's show. However, her fears were quickly dispelled, as Lucille Ball proved to be kind and welcoming. In a gesture of camaraderie and support, the comedy icon invited Barbara into her dressing room, where she even took the time to help the younger actor with her dress, adding sparkles to enhance its on-screen appearance during the dancing scene. This act of generosity and kindness demonstrated Lucille Ball's genuine and down-to-earth nature, leaving a lasting impression on Barbara Eden, who marveled at the rare quality of such a renowned star. The iconic pairing of Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman in the sitcom I Dream of Jeannie was a hallmark of television history. However, behind the scenes, the show faced challenges due to Larry Hagman's worsening battle with alcoholism. Barbara Eden had to take a stand to ensure that her co-star, who played Major Tony Nelson, remained a part of the show. In an interview with Studio 10, Barbara Eden shared the struggle she faced to keep Larry Hagman on the show. She revealed that despite his unhappiness and personal issues, as soon as the cameras started rolling, he transformed into a professional and delivered outstanding performances. Barbara actively fought with the producers who contemplated firing Hagman due to his off-screen struggles. She recognized his exceptional talent and insisted that removing him from the cast would be a colossal mistake. In fact, she humorously mentioned that Larry Hagman thanked her for saving his house, underscoring the significance of his continued role on the show. The challenges Larry Hagman faced were exacerbated by his personal dissatisfaction with the scripts for I Dream of Jeannie. Barbara Eden explained that while filming, he was a consummate actor, but he had a strong aversion to the show's writing. In a candid revelation, she mentioned that there was a point where his discontent reached a dramatic climax. In an act of protest, Larry Hagman expressed his disdain for the scripts by urinating on one of them. These actions were indicative of the turmoil he was experiencing, amplified by his struggles with alcohol and diet pills, which took a toll on his well-being and behavior. In 1971, Barbara Eden faced a heart-wrenching tragedy when she experienced the loss of her second child. The pain and grief she endured during this period were immeasurable. She candidly shared her devastating experience with People magazine, revealing that she had carried her baby for nearly eight months before receiving the devastating news from doctors that her child had tragically passed away in the womb. The loss of her child was a profound and life-altering moment for Barbara. Despite the medical emergency and the immense emotional burden, she made the difficult decision to return to work almost immediately feeling numb and trying to cope with the overwhelming grief. Day by day, she faced the weight of her loss, and the toll it took on her was evident in the physical and emotional changes she underwent. Barbara disclosed that she had lost a significant amount of weight, a visible reflection of the emotional turmoil she was experiencing. However, it was during this time that Barbara Eden also grappled with an internal struggle that went unrecognized. She was unaware that her profound unhappiness could be attributed to postpartum depression. In her own words, she would come home and look at her young son, recognizing that she was fortunate to have such a sweet child and a loving husband. She couldn't understand why she was plagued by such unhappiness. The lack of understanding about postpartum depression during that era and the stigma associated with seeking psychiatric help left her suffering in silence. The hidden trauma from the miscarriage and the unaddressed postpartum depression took a devastating toll on Barbara Eden's marriage to Michael and Sarah. She acknowledged that her deep depression had a destructive impact on their relationship, causing a strain that was difficult to overcome. Barbara Eden's marriage to Michael and Sarah, which had lasted for 15 years, faced an insurmountable challenge in the aftermath of the tragic miscarriage of their child. 
the profound grief and loss they experienced ultimately proved too much for their relationship to bear. In her memoir, Genie Out of the Bottle, Barbara Eden disclosed the difficulties that plagued their marriage. Despite attempts to address their marital problems through open and honest discussions, each conversation seemed to exacerbate the growing chasm between them. The weight of their shared tragedy and the inability to overcome it took an emotional toll on both of them. Finally, in the face of mounting difficulties, Barbara made the painful decision to ask for a divorce. This request came as a shock to Michael and Sara, leaving him feeling angry and bewildered. Their separation became official in 1973, marking the end of a marriage that had once shown great promise and love. One of the most heart-wrenching aspects of the divorce for Barbara Eden was the impact it had on their son, Matthew. When Barbara remarried and moved to Chicago with her new husband, it meant that Michael now had custody of their child. This geographical separation resulted in a profound emotional struggle for Barbara, who found herself shedding tears frequently as she grappled with being separated from her beloved son. Years later, Barbara learned of the deep and lasting effects the divorce had on Matthew. She expressed deep regret in her memoir, acknowledging that the divorce's repercussions on Matthew turned out to be cataclysmic. She reflected on how, if she had possessed the ability to glimpse into the future at that time, she would have made the choice to remain in the marriage until Matthew had reached adulthood. However, the challenges they faced were insurmountable and the painful decision to divorce had been made. Barbara Eden's second marriage, which began in 1977, started with a sense of hope and the desire to find love and happiness after the heartbreak of her first divorce. At the time, she was feeling lonely, and Chuck Feggert, who worked in marketing, seemed to be a perfect match. He was handsome, intelligent, and, initially, loads of fun, which helped to sweep her off her feet. However, their seemingly promising relationship took a sudden and shocking turn after eight months together. Barbara Eden learned that Chuck Feggert was still married, a revelation that left her reeling with disbelief. According to her memoir, she had been completely unaware of his existing marriage during the initial stages of their relationship. Feggert tried to downplay the situation by convincing Eden that it didn't matter because he was in the process of getting a divorce. This revelation added a layer of deception and betrayal to their relationship, straining the trust that had entirely brought them together. Although Chuck Fagert attempted to charm Barbara's mother with his salesmanship skills, the deception surrounding his marital status left a lasting mark. Barbara's mother, understandably, never truly forgave him for the dishonesty that had marred the early stages of their relationship. Beyond the issue of his concealed marriage, there were further problems that plagued with Barbara Eden's marriage to Figert. She noted that he had a strong need for attention and fame, which created additional challenges in their relationship. Over time, their marriage took a darker turn, as Fegger began associating with a crowd that indulged in excessive drinking and cocaine use. These behaviors exacerbated the strain in their relationship and ultimately led to emotional and physical abuse. Barbara Eden made the difficult decision to leave the marriage due to the escalating abuse, prioritizing her own well-being and safety. This second marriage, which had initially held promise, ultimately unraveled due to a combination of deceit, incompatible lifestyles, and the destructive influence of substance abuse. In 1983, when Barbara Eden returned to Los Angeles, she was met with a devastating shock that would change her family's life forever. Her beloved son, Matthew Ansara, had transformed into someone unrecognizable, and the happiness that she had known him for had vanished. In an interview with ABC News, Barbara Eden revealed that Matthew had been concealing a harrowing secret, a long-standing battle with drug addiction that had remained hidden from his parents for years. The revelation of her son's hidden struggle was a profound and painful awakening for Barbara. During this difficult period, Barbara Eden realized that she and her ex-husband, Michael Ansara, had been unaware of the truth about their son's ordeal. 
They had been in the dark, and their lack of awareness compounded the tragedy that was unfolding within their family. It was only when Matthew reached the age of 19 that Barbara learned the extent of his struggles. Shockingly, she discovered that he had been using drugs since the tender age of 10, a heartbreaking revelation that filled her with anguish and regret. She later disclosed that a man in their San Fernando Valley neighborhood had introduced Matthew to marijuana, a substance he had been cultivating himself and sharing with local children. The pain of knowing that her son had been exposed to drugs at such a young age weighed heavily on Barbara Eden. She firmly expressed her belief that drugs should never be accessible to children under any circumstances, highlighting the need for vigilant oversight and prevention. In an effort to address the gravity of her son's addiction, Barbara Eden and her ex-husband, Michael and Sarah, united to take action. They made the difficult decision to send Matthew to rehab in their pursuit of his recovery. However, the path to rehabilitation and healing proved to be an arduous and challenging one, as addiction often resists easy solutions. The family was faced with the enduring struggle of helping Matthew overcome his addiction and navigating the complex and heart-wrenching journey toward recovery. Barbara Eden endured 14 years of heart-wrenching challenges while dealing with her son, Matthew and Sarah, battle with addiction. It was a tumultuous and agonizing journey marked by multiple stays in rehab facilities. Initially, Barbara and her ex-husband Michael and Sarah struggled to recognize the alarming changes in their son's behavior. Matthew's shifts in temperament, which swung from episodes of sleeping excessively to sudden outbursts of anger, left them bewildered. The actor recalled her profound fear and anxiety as she tried to make sense of these troubling mood swings exhibited by her once charming and darling boy. The unexpected and sometimes violent changes in his demeanor due to addiction left her scared to death. Barbara Eden's greatest challenge during this period was that her son, Matthew, was too young to fully understand the gravity of his addiction and the need for rehabilitation and assistance. This made the situation even more complex and challenging to address. After a long and painful struggle, Barbara Eden resorted to the tough love approach. She made the difficult decision to tell her son that he could not live in her home if he continued to use drugs. Matthew was left with no choice but to leave. His parents, filled with concern, began searching frantically for him as he ventured out on his own. This decision led to Matthew becoming homeless and sleeping on the streets during various periods of his life. Barbara Eden, although filled with the desire to see her son, found it difficult to trust him in his vulnerable state. She made sure to provide him with food to ensure his well-being, but the ongoing battle with addiction created a rift in their relationship, and trust was an elusive commodity. Barbara Eden shared a deeply close and cherished bond with her mother, who she described as very stylish. Her mother had a career as a credit manager at a jewelry store and took great pride in her sense of fashion. She was not only stylish, but also a source of inspiration for Barbara. As a young child, Barbara's mother played a significant role in cultivating her passion for singing. Their evenings were filled with the simple yet precious moments of doing dishes together, accompanied by the melodious tunes of Gilbert and Sullivan ditties. Barbara fondly remembered those early memories of family life and the joy of joining her mother in song. Her mother's encouragement and unwavering support fostered Barbara's love for singing, and she always knew that her mother was there for her, providing the foundation for her passion and talent. Years later, Barbara Eden's beloved mother faced a tragic diagnosis, lung cancer. The illness was particularly cruel, characterized by a prolonged and painful ordeal that her mother endured. In her memoir, Barbara Eden revealed the profound suffering her mother had to endure during her final illness, which deeply affected both of them. Remarkably, Barbara's normally serene mother had kept the disease hidden for a period of time. In a poignant and heart-wrenching revelation, Barbara learned, through one of her mother's friends, 
that she had been experiencing difficulty breathing at night for an extended duration, yet she continued to ignore her symptoms and never gave her daughter a hint of the battle she was facing. This revelation left Barbara deeply moved and pondering her mother's strength and resolve. Barbara Eden's belief was that her mother, following her own dictate, had persevered and endured until it became impossible for her to do so any longer. The most profound tragedy in Barbara Eden's life unfolded in 2001, when she experienced the devastating loss of her son, Matthew and Sarah, due to a heroin overdose. At the time of his passing, Matthew had been maintaining sobriety and was engaged to his girlfriend, seemingly on a path toward a more stable and hopeful future. However, a momentary lapse led to a tragic outcome. According to Barbara Eden, it appeared that Matthew had taken a hit of heroin after a period of abstinence, and this decision had fatal consequences. The heroin stopped his heart resulting in the tragic and untimely death of her beloved son. The anguish of losing her child was an indescribable burden for the former sitcom star, and she grappled with overwhelming emotions. Barbara Eden found Matthew's dependence on drugs to be utterly inexplicable, and she partially blamed herself for the tragic turn of events. The loss of her son was an immense source of guilt and anger, a burden she carried as a parent who had lost a child. She candidly admitted that there was nothing worse than experiencing such a loss. And for a significant period afterward, she lived on the edge of tears, navigating the profound grief that enveloped her. In the wake of this devastating loss, Barbara Eden turned her personal tragedy into an opportunity for advocacy and support. She began speaking with parents who were also facing the challenges of dealing with their children's addiction. Through these interactions, she hoped to share her experiences and insights, emphasizing the importance of parental awareness and intervention. Barbara believed that it was crucial for parents to recognize and address the issues their children faced, as it offered a chance to provide help and support. Although the ultimate choice rested with the child, there remained hope and the possibility of recovery. As she reflected on her son, Barbara Eden remembered Matthew as a beautiful human being, inside and out, particularly when he was sober. She acknowledged that, despite being 35 years old, he was still her baby, forever cherished and deeply missed. The loss of Matthew was a heartbreaking and life-altering tragedy that would forever shape Barbara Eden's perspective on addiction and the importance of parental involvement and support in the face of such challenges. What do you think about Barbara Eden's tragic life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.